Failure was active from 90 to 97 and released three albums, all of them great listens, and the newest one always being a progression from the last sound. The band experimented with sonic textures and just had this great way of mixing the guitar and bass right that all the songs had a really cool way of being heavy and having this great bottom end. Failure never really seemed to break through to the masses, and most of their singles, i.e. the fantastic Undone and Stuck on You, would only slightly break radio and receive little to no airplay. But what the band may have lacked in fan base was made up for in other experimental, very much in the limelight musicians name checking the band or touring with them, such as Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails and Maynard James Keenan of Tool. It was actually a normal occurrence for Tool guitarist Adam Jones to join the band on stage and play McCall with them. Now, while most name checked the band's last sprawling, mostly concept album, Fantastic Planet, I'm going to take time to focus on their first album, Comfort. Around 92, Failure signed with Slash Records, the indie extension of Warner Brothers that featured some key punk bands such as Fear, The Germs, X, and later Faith No More and L7. The band chose to record a Steve Albini who had quite an underground name at the time for his work, most notably with the Pixie Super Rosa, as well as his own work with Big Black, and started recording at Pachyderm Studios in Minnesota in the summer of 92. Now, if this studio sounds familiar, it was also the same studio that gave us Nirvana's In Utero and PJ Harvey's Rid of Me, as well as Soul Asylum's Great Dancers Union and Live Store and Copper. The first track is Submission, and we're introduced to the core of the album, Ken's massively distorted loud guitar, Robert's booming drums, an obvious Albini trademark, and Greg's heavy bass both holding down the rhythm section and making the guitar attack an all-out pitch creep. I can't emphasize how much I love the guitar on this. You could have an all-instrumental version of Comfort, and I'd still listen to it repeatedly. There's just something so heavy about it. It's angry, it's full of energy, and it's played at blistering volume. At some points, it's definitely ugly, but it always seems to maintain some sense of melody, like always tripping the line. There's these weird and random quieter pieces of music in between songs that helps to add a really creepy feel to the album. A lot of the lyrics are pretty hard to make out because of the sheer volume of the instruments compared to vocals, but even when you decipher them, the songs can be kind of abstract with a main theme about hate and violence. Pro Catastrophe is a great example of both of these as the narrator basically wishes Armageddon on Earth so he can watch everyone running around in pain and even states it as the best movie you'd ever hope to see. When all was said and done and Comfort was released in September of 92, both the band and Albini expressed being unhappy with its final sound and that it didn't sound like the band. Now this is kind of one of the drawing appeals of this album for me. That isn't to say that I don't like what they did later, I'm done being one of my favorite failure tunes. It's just nice to see diversity and growth in a band, and there's something special to me about having all of the CDs of an artist and being able to listen to them and see how the band progressed and grew. It's kind of like being a parent and watching something you know and love get older and watching the full potential of it to do something really great. So if you're a fan of hard-hitting 90s rock, or the Albini's recording procedures, or just looking for something raw and really fucking hard, check this out. 